Hi again, everyone. Welcome back. Um, yes, I'm back on the camera again. You'll probably be sick of the sight of me, but I did get tagged in by good old James at uh, Retro Import Gamer. He tagged me in the good old 10 questions thing that's going around. I think it was started by, uh, was it Pete, Pete Fighter 2? Pete Fighter 2? Something Fighter 2. Might be Tony Fighter 2, actually. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll put links to, the, to that channel and the other ones down below. I might copy and paste them from <laughs> from James's video. So, yeah, quite a few people have done these response videos now. Um, the idea is that when you finish it, you tag two other people. So it's kind of one of those viral things where we'd all be infected by the end of it. Um, yeah, and I've been kind of dreading these questions because <laughs> they really don't suit me the best. But uh, I like to take part in these things if I've been tagged in. So, so let's have a go. I've scribbled them out on this piece of paper. So I've just finished work. I'm not going to make this a long video because my dinner is in the oven. So let's get on with these things. Right, so question number one, what type of games do you like to play? Um, that's quite an open question. I have thought about these a little bit while I've been at work today. Um, I would say if there's a type of game I like to play, probably I guess I would have to say like um, 80s arcade style of, of games. So, yeah, simple games, pick up and play games. I don't like to be faffing around getting into games really too much these days. Um, I like to be able to jump up, switch whatever system on and be straight into a, a game. So stuff like, let's say, for instance, Defender or top-down racing games, something like that. Um, yeah, those sorts of games or single screen platformers as well. So, yeah, uh, the arcade games, I guess I'd sort of round it off to. Right, so that's that one. Number two. Uh, how much I don't have a job to read my own writing. I scribbled this out pretty quick. <laughs> how much time on average do you spend playing video games? Um, it varies quite a lot, to be honest. I wouldn't say I've got any routine to playing video games. And it's one of those things. Um, sometimes I haven't done this for a while, but sometimes I'll go for a spell where I quite enjoy playing a modern game. Uh, and if I'm playing something online with friends, then I'll probably start playing it sort of two hours an evening, every, every evening pretty much. So you know, I used to play, for instance, I used to play uh, Destiny 2, and that I was playing every night, you know, pretty much without fail. So, uh, so yeah, back then I'd be playing sort of two hours a night, most nights. Lately, um, I'm not playing anything online or anything modern, or very, not, very little modern anyway, so probably probably about two to four hours a week, I expect. Um, but it does vary. And also at the moment, I think probably a lot of people are the same. In the summer, I definitely play a bit less. Um, it's quite hot and humid a lot of evenings. So I get home from work, I'm absolutely done in. So I quite like to just to sit down and watch a film. I'm watching more films lately than I've watched in ages. And I think it's partly because of the humidity. So yeah, it really takes it out of your, I find. So I tend to crash out and wa watch something. So yeah, two to four hours a week on average at the moment. So number three, can video games be educational? Um, it's kind of an obvious answer to this one, because yes, they definitely can. Uh, to give an example, I learned how to play poker from Sam Fox's strip poker back in the day on a specy. So yeah, there was no greater motivation than to seeing Sam's digitized boobs. <laughs> so yes, I did learn to play poker with that game. So yes, you definitely can. And there are there's loads of educational games. There always has been. On a TI-99, there used to be a lot of um, educational game cartridges. We never had any of them. But there would be like alligator subtraction or something, and you, you little sums would come up, and you'd shoot the correct ones or something like that. And there were a couple of Space Invader-type ones as well. And there have been games, and even on the Spectrum, you could get games for helping you pass your driving test and various other things. And as other people have mentioned, obviously, just gen general games, they, you know, you've got to um, sharpen up your senses, I suppose. You've got to have quick reactions for a lot of things and make quick decisions and strategies and tactics and all that type of thing. So, yeah, they definitely can be educational in a couple of different senses. There can be learning software and just playing games in general uh, can teach you a few things. So, yeah, I'll put a yes to that one. Uh, next question is, what do you like about video games? No, sorry, what don't you like about video games? Oh, <laughs> I, was, I was already planning on a do for this one. Um, that's my writing for you. What don't you like about video games? 
Oh, yeah, I didn't think about this one. Um, what don't I like? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this down more to modern games because there's not much I don't like about old games. Um, I would say what I don't like about video games is how you can, which is not a fault of the game, it's just me, my lack of commitment, but it's how there can be so much learning to do with combinations of moves and, and all that type of thing. That if you have a break from a game, which I tend to do, I don't tend to stick with one game too much. Uh, if you have a break from a game, come back to it. You've, you've forgotten what you're doing and where you're going and, and all the different combinations you have to press for, for different moves and that. A uh, classic one like that was a game I really enjoyed for a long time, which was Dying Light. And I got really far through, had a break from it, came back to it, and I couldn't remember any of the com button combinations and that for the different moves. And not only that, but there was an update which made it, the game a lot harder as well, and I just couldn't get back into it. I know you can do the tutorials and that over and over again, but you know I just can't be bothered with that. So, yeah, it's, it's just a personal thing. It's nothing, not a criticism against the game, because obviously a very complex game. That's, that's down to you to learn it and remember it. Um, but yeah, I'll put that down for that one. I can't think of anything else, really. Uh, number five, how much do you spend on video games? Um, it varies, probably like most people. Um, yeah, how much do I spend on video games? Probably if I had to average it out, and this does vary quite a lot. If I had to average it out, probably 15 to 20 pounds a week. Maybe twenty five pounds if I'm if I bought a few things. I'm lucky because mainly I'm buying sort of Spectrum and BBC Micro and that type of thing, and they're they're pretty cheap. So um, and I'm not buying games every week. I quite often do. Um, yeah, I'd say if I balance it out, probably if if you worked out over the course of a year, it probably average out to about twenty pounds a week, I expect. But like I say, there's no hard and fast rule to it. Some I might go a couple of weeks and not buy anything at all video game related. I don't really buy much in the way of modern games, so they're the expensive ones. Uh, so yeah, I'll put it put that down. 20, 25 quid a week. Number six, favorite games console. Now this is a tricky one for me because obviously I'm mainly into your earlier stuff, 80s, um, but computers really, sort of Spectrum and TI-99, but they're not consoles. Um, Favourite console? This is quite a tough one, actually. I've got two choices here. I'm going to discuss them both a little bit, and then I'll make my pick. Uh, the obvious one would be the SNES, the Super Nintendo. I think a lot of people would, would choose that. And it would be justified as well, because it was a great console. Um, probably the about the pinnacle of that type of games. It was a huge leap from, you know, sort of Nintendo Entertainment System, the first one. And just games like, Super Mario World were just incredible. I still think that was a pinnacle of 2D platforming. Um, just an absolutely amazing game. In its day and still, it's still, still absolutely brilliant to play it now. Um, so you got that. And then you had games like Mario Kart, which, again, that sort of kart racing, you didn't have that before. Or well, certainly not, not to the level of, of Mario Kart. That was just an unreal game. So, yeah. And Smash TV. You know, so many great games. And I've got a lot of nostalgia for it because I owned it. It was a time when I was living in, I was living in hotel digs, working in hotels, and yeah, we'd all play it pretty much every night when we came in from the pubs and clubs. I'd used to take that in the staff room, or people would pile into my room, play games. We'd have little tournaments on Mario Kart and everything leathered. So yeah, good times, and I still enjoy playing the SNES. I think the games still look really good. So that would be a contender. The other contender, which was, I think I might even choose this one, and it would surprise a lot of people because. I don't own one. Um, I don't feel much nostalgia for it. <laughs> I have no intention of buying one, and I don't think I ever will rebuy one. But there's a lot to be said for it, and that's the Xbox 360. Um, yeah, it had a lot going for it. It really did. I, li I moved out to Argentina when, at the time the Xbox 360 came out. And, of course, that was really the first big online console. I did have the original Xbox before that, which I did play online a bit. And I also had the PlayStation 2, which I did use to play that online as well, which not many people did. But it was the Xbox 360, which really brought online to life. And I used to have a lot of friends I played games with every night. Um, really gave me, a, a sort of kept me, in, kept me in touch with home. Uh, it, made, <laughs> it made me not feel very far away, to be honest. 
And that was at a time when phone calls to England were really expensive. You didn't have all the sort of WhatsApp calls and that that you've got now. This is going back to 2006. Uh, but yeah, Xbox Live just kept me in touch with everybody. And yeah, we'd have a brilliant laugh. We'd play Gears of War every night, Project Gotham Racing 3. There were some great games on there, Fuels of War, Frontline's Fuels of War, um, Battlefield Bad Company 2, loads of brilliant multiplayer games. And yet not only that, this is a bit, I'm rambling on a bit now, but not only that, I'm just thinking back. The online community at that time was so good. It was really good people. It wasn't anywhere near as toxic as it is now. And you didn't have all the screaming kids on the microphones either. If you, you weren't in party chat, you were in with randoms. And most people you play games with, even if you didn't know any of them, they would be really good, good people that you'd bump into. But there's more than that. It had Xbox Live Arcade, which I was a huge fan of. And that was probably what got me back into retro gaming to a, to an extent as well, because I used to play a lot of retro styled games on there and retro arcade re-releases. Classic example being Jetpack. Was it Jetpack Reloaded? Absolutely loved that. But there were loads of really good Xbox Live arcade games. And then a little bit further down the line from that, you had Xbox Live indie games, which not many people picked up on, I don't think. But that was separate to the live arcade games. And the indie games were really cheap. You could be paying sort of 40 pence, 80 pence for those. Some of them were really good with online play as well. Um, myself and a few friends used to play a game called Easy Golf. And I think that was, it must have been about 80 pence to, to buy it. And you could design your own courses on it. You could share them, play them online. And it was just really brilliant game. There were loads of good games on there. Um, like I said, I don't think many people picked up on those at the time. And yeah. So the online was great. The dashboard was great. I loved the blades and the, and also the one that came after it. So there's definitely a lot to be said for for the Xbox 360 in all the, all that it did. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to put that. I'm going to put that instead of a SNES. So yeah, favorite console and business console, not including computers. <laughs> I'll go with the Xbox 360. Kind of don't like saying it, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with it. Um, number seven. What is your favorite game? Chaos. <laughs> That's a, all day, every day. I've talked about it before. Here you go. Look. That's the one. That is the game. Chaos. Yeah. Got to be that. Uh, no other game will ever compete with that because it is also the time. It was a, It was my introduction to turn-based tactics games, which I then played for years. L loved turn-based tactics up until probably fairly recently. I don't really have the time to commit for them anymore. But yeah, that was the start of it for me. Um, myself and my best mate would just play that all the time. Never got tired of it. And whenever we met up, he's not around anymore, sadly. Um, but whenever we used to meet up, we'd always talk about chaos. <laughs> we loved it. We always used to say, I wish you could play that online so we could play over distance. You probably can now, but at that time we couldn't. Um, but yeah, and I still love it now. I still love to fire it up and have a game of chaos. There's something special about it. So, um, yeah, a lot of people say you can't put just one game. But, yes, I can. I, there's If I had to do a top 10 list of all-time favorite games, that would be really hard. But to do a list of just one, that's easy. Chaos. So that's that. Um, what is your favorite... I oh, know. What is your favorite video game? What is your favorite video game movie? Ah, another easy one. Hang on. Um, so I should have been more prepared for this, shouldn't I? I'm surprised I've not seen anybody mention this, which I'm really surprised about. But yeah, it's got to be Tron. Come on, because it, it, it doesn't have to be, from watching other people's, it doesn't have to be um, a, a sort of video game converted into a film, anything video game related, but Tron, the classic. I could watch this, well, I, not only I can, I have watched it again and again. I've, I've watched this film so many times. Um, it's perfect. Just your perfect chill out movie. And not only that, the arcade game of Tron, which came after this, obviously, that's the game that followed the film. The arcade game was brilliant as well. So, yes, got to be Tron. That was, a, that was the easiest question on the list, apart from best game. Right. Uh, this one's going to be a bit more difficult because it's favorite video game character. Uh, I think. Um, Two to UK said this well when he said it's going to be your favourite if you love them that much. You got to sort of think to yourself, which would I, what character would I have tattooed on myself? And I've got to be honest, I don't think there's any video game character that I'd have tattooed on my arm or elsewhere. Mm. So, 
favorite video game character? Uh, I would have considered the really obvious one, which would have been Mario, just because of the amount of years he's been with us and delivered great games. I mean, if you think about it, it's not just going back to your Mario worlds and, and such like. He was there in Donkey Kong, and Donkey Kong was brilliant. So he's been there throughout. Um, yeah, I played Donkey Kong. I used to have Donkey Kong on the TI-99, our first, very first family computer. So, yeah, he's, he's been there throughout. He's been in some of the greatest games, if you think Super Mario World and the Mario games and, and all the spin-offs. Loads of them have been brilliant. I know it gets people get a bit tiresome of seeing him, but he's been in some great spin-offs with the Mario Golfs and Mario Tennis and Mario Kart, of course. Um, so it's difficult to argue against him, but there is one other. There is another. And I'm going to put him as, a, as my choice, and that is Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, Pac-Man. He is a character, isn't he? Um, I mean, some people would think it's a stretch to call him a character when he's just the sort of one slice missing from a pizza. But he has his arms and legs in in some things. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a cool character. And he, again, he's been there from the start. He's always been there. He'll always be around. And I do think he's a cool character. I like it. It's something, something very happy about seeing Pac-Man. If I see a little picture of him anywhere, he always makes me smile. So no matter how badly drawn it is or how much of a ripoff it is of Pac-Man, it makes me smile just at being Pac-Man. So, uh, so yes, there you go. Favorite video game character, Pac-Man. Uh, and I think this is, was the last question. Um, least favorite type of game. Mm -hmm. I had to think about this one, but I don't know if I even decided on a, on an answer for it. Um, least favorite type of game. I would say, <clears throat> which I think other people have said, it's probably things games where you've got to read a lot. Um, so I suppose RPGs. It's not that I hate all RPGs. I mean, I loved, for instance, Diablo 3 um, on the Xbox. What was that on? Series? Was that on a... No, not on the Series X. I get mixed up with the names. It might have been PlayStation 4. I played that on. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I loved Diablo 3, and that was obviously... That's classed as an RPG, isn't it? Or an RPG light. But in general, I don't like games where I've got to go and read character dialogue, and especially if it goes on and on, and then you go and do something, speak to somebody else, and come back and speak to another character. Even if they've got an actual voice, it gets on my tit. So, um, so yeah, I suppose I'll have to put it down to RPGs for that one. Um, yeah, that brings me on to the end. So I think I've rattled through those quite quickly. I can't see how long a video is because I've got the camera the other way around this time. Oh, and also let me know how this crappy little microphone sounds. Where is it? Better than normal or worse? <laughs> it's only a cheap and nasty jobby. Um, so yeah, anyway, I've got to finish off by tagging two people. Um, some people have mentioned who they're going to tag. Some people will just put it in the comments below, but I'm going to mention them on mine. So the first one, and I know he doesn't usually do these type of videos, so I'm putting him on the spot here. So uh, he doesn't have to do them, of course, but I'm hoping he will. And that is going to be Retro Tap, Richard. So Richard, get a video out there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a change from you to do, do one of these things. He usually does his gameplay videos. But yeah, it'd be nice to see one from him. Um, the second person, I'm going to do the my good buddy Alex, U-Star Gamer, who's up for Tuber of the Month this month. So uh, yeah, I don't think he's put out any videos, so he should be doing it. He should be trying to push himself. So this will give him a video to do. <laughs> So, yeah, I know he often talks about doing videos and he doesn't do any. But, yeah, this will be one hopefully you'll jump on. So, Alex, get one done, buddy. <laughs> and that's it. That's all. So I'm going to go and have my dinner now. Thanks a lot for tuning in and watching. I'll catch you another time. And that is all.